So we're inside the last 10 kilometers here on stage two of the Tour of Beijing and uh, not really uh, full out warfare yet between the big sprinters team. So who are we looking for? Tail boss from, we've just mentioned, of uh, Rabobank, uh, Lee Howard. Riding for HTC Heinrich Hausler of uh, the Garmin Cervelo squad. Those are the riders who have brought men towards the front at the moment. Now, liquid gas, you can see lurking behind the main line of riders, have Peter Zargan, who will clearly be the man that they are aiming at uh, pushing over the line first. Remarkable that he's only 21 years of age, Peter Sargon. As opposed to his brother, who is apparently 22. Uh, Leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Enough, enough. Cameron Meyer at the back of the peloton. Done his bit of work early on. We've seen plenty of him. There's been a lot of work being done uh, by riders from... Garmin Cervelo trying to keep the pace high enough for Heinrich Hausler, the uh, national champion of uh, Australia by the way is Jack Bobridge uh, sitting at the back next to Meyer on his right who is the time trial champion of Australia we saw him in the jersey yesterday so the two of those guys uh, really uh, have been on the track on and off since their junior days Part of the Australian Institute of Sport squad. And brilliant riders, both. And world champions to boot. Bobridge, the fastest man over four kilometres ever. That was a stunning ride. Yeah. I think everybody was surprised when they woke up in the morning and heard that had happened. Still think it's a shame that that event's not in the Olympics anymore. Individual pursuit. Yes. Um, yeah, it's one of those. It's going to be one of those ongoing debates, isn't it? Yeah. Interestingly, it's the Chinese. You know, you can see how powerful uh, the the whole Chinese cycling phenomenon is becoming. Because I think as the Chinese became more influential on the International Olympic Committee and, of course, on the UCI before the Beijing Olympics, a lot of the endurance um, events tended to just gently go by the board or they were removed from the calendar and the sprint events in which other nations can start to compete a little bit more equally uh, or certainly have more uh, people in their program have uh, have come to the fore i think there's there's a great amount of credence to that argument a lot of people were denied of course at the top end of uh, cycling including the uci and the chinese uh, cycling federation but i think it's actually uh, possibly the case is that um, you have to tailor events i think it's it was just practicality they had to tailor events to uh, co cater for other nations coming in but it is a great shame the yeah. kilo is gone as well so uh, these sort of traditional events are going but we're seeing it on the road new events here things like Paris Brussels you were saying disappear yeah yeah it's, uh, it's going to be an ongoing uh, ever evolving uh, change in, uh, in the whole cycling scene worldwide bunch getting a bit a uh, bit more active now a bit more jostling for position Neil Ransom saying I'm watching in the UK I've got to say you don't sound like a morning chap uh, somebody said that yesterday actually I don't think it's that actually I do I, I quite like getting up in the morning I'm not a problem with getting up in the morning and, and doing stuff I just think there's not much going on <laughs> it's, this is one it of those things maybe tomorrow might be a bit more yes yeah happening. out in the mountains a bit but uh, yeah not an awful lot going on somebody said that in the Tour de France why aren't you talking about the race rather than about the castle you know, why are you talking about that castle there and not about the race and my answer had to be well, there isn't actually anything going on. Yeah. It's not TV worth pictures about. do the talking sometimes. Exactly. On the right-hand side of your screen, Astana have come to the front for the first time. Gasparotto, uh, possibly the man that they're thinking will do some work. It, teams like HTC quite pleased to let other teams take over the, the, at least this bit of uh, riding. They can get a bit of a breather and then get back to the front again. Yeah, well, it's, it's again, you, you can't put all your riders on the front to control a, a breakaway distance-wise. You have got to save some uh, riders for later on. And with uh, you know, teams of eight and sometimes less in many races, it, it's very difficult to control races. That's why you need you know, two or three teams that are doing with a similar object in mind, like we saw in the Tour this year, Garmin, HTC, all contributed to uh, keeping the breakaways at a reasonable distance. Uh, 
apparently Andrew Tulansky not starting this morning. Uh, that's the first we've heard of that. Um, a lot of people, you know, say, well, why didn't you say these things? If we don't have official confirmation of it, it's very difficult to say. But uh, that's the tweets that are going about. The Tulansky from Garmin Cervelo not starting today. So they lost another man, unfortunately. Talansky, one of the leading lights of the under uh, 25s competition. Actually, somebody was asking why the little stars against some of the riders on the start list. That's because they're in the best young riders competition. Or oh, they're eligible for it. 5k to go. Riders looking around now, seeing where the sprinters are, just seeing, assessing the situation. In the middle, liquid gas. In the lime green. At the front of the moment, it's Saxo back, but nobody really wanting to take up the full charge. Left-hand side of your screen, uh, Lamprey come to the front. They have uh, Alfredo Baloni and uh, Francesco Govazzi. It, just, it is a fairly straightforward run in this. This last five kilometers running alongside the river. Um, a little bit of dog leg with about two just over two and a half kilometers to go but otherwise it's it's straight in uh, all the way to the finish and uh, good good wide roads uh, flat flat finish as well two riders trying to ride away it's uh, very unlikely to happen one has to say giving it uh, some sort of go at least but with four kilometers to go it's all in control for the peloton at the moment with Saxo Bank just pulling along at the front it is a straight out sprinters finish we saw the finish line a bit earlier today uh, when uh, the entertainment was going on and it is a completely flat run in from here there's no lumps and bumps whatsoever be quite confusing what's the an inflatable arch which usually signifies a certain um, distance to go five up there are almost every hundred meters on this running yeah well we saw this section earlier this is a running down by the uh, lake here Beautiful road service. I've got to say, it must be pretty uh, nice to, to ride in. Little bit of a tail breeze, but hardly any wind at all uh, bringing them uh, along. And now Sky pushing to the front. They want to keep the pace a little bit higher. Michael Barry with uh, Alex Dowsett, best young rider's jersey on his shoulders, the white uh, jersey. Remember, he's the British time trial champion, so we saw him in that skin suit yesterday. Uh, Apollonio has been in a fine run of form recently. Sort of a deja vu almost there. It sort of reminded me of uh, Geraint Thomas in the Tour de France in the white there. It's yeah, sort of he at the front on the run into the, exactly. uh, the sprints. And they have similar styles actually over the hoods. They look quite similar when they're, when they're driving along. Now Rabobank looking to bring Theo Boss towards the line. BMC on the far right hand side getting a little boxed in at the moment. They've got Alexander Kristoff, the Norwegian champion. Look for the Norwegian champion's jersey. Here we go. Just as we said, Katusha coming to the front. They have Denis uh, Gelimzinov to run for this one. This is a little dog leg. And coming up to the last two kilometers, Rabobank establishing themselves at the front. That's a good place to be. They move their way uh, into that point very quickly. Whoop, careful. Coming up on the inside of the barriers is Sky. Rabobank moving across the road. Sky coming very quickly. Nearest to the camera. Um, this is a jostling position. Want to see all the riders maybe just easing up. Don't want to or get involved. Maybe, involved maybe there's a bit of a it's fall. crash. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. It's just split it up. Oh, uh, who is uh, on the deck? Well, we don't know is the answer to that. Um, you would doubt if it's any of the sprinters because they shouldn't be at that far back. They still might be jostling for places, but they should be up towards the front by now. Quick step. Mixed in with Rabobank on the far side of the road here. With the helicopter shot, we can now see uh, Leopard Trek. One, two, three, four back. And Christoph being brought around the top side of your shot. Uh, the rider who's uh, on Bookwalter. the deck is Brent Bookwalter. There was a Rabobank rider and a quick step rider in there as well. 
This is a pretty scrappy finish here, Graham. Yeah, it's a good wide road though, and uh, sometimes that can cause confusion because it does, or can cause its problems because you get the sometimes get the bunch more bunched up, if you like, um, and rather where you get a bit of a technical finish, it does string it out. Lipper trick of taking it up with uh, less than less than uh, two to go. Where is the? finish line where is the banner we're coming into the finish line i think now we've not seen the banner as robert uh, wagner uh, pulls off this is the run in towards the line Kalimzinov uh, pushed out on the right hand side of your shot on the left hand side of the shot it looks like uh, here comes to boss Boss on the wheel of Galimzinov. Boss goes around the outside. Can he outspread? I think Teo Boss is coming hard at this one. He's not quite going to get it. Ooh, I close. think that was Jedis Galimzinov just ahead of Heinrich Hausler. Boss on the left-hand side. I would suggest that that was... Is that Hader? Yep. I would suggest that that was the order in which they finished. Galimzinov, Hausler and Boss. I may be wrong very difficult to tell where that uh, finish line was and what was coming up how to look annoyed in one easy lesson and here we go this is from the overhead shot you can see Teo Boss uh, has to check his speed at this point he's behind uh, Kiki of quick step who goes through the line moves across very scrappy finish Kiki tries to get the uh, gap in the middle. Look at the way Boss comes through the middle. Galimzinov still lying third in line behind uh, Heinrich Hausler. We'll get a better shot from the overhead. Galimzinov in the middle. Hausler on the near side. Boss on the far side. They're coming for the line. Yes, Galimzinov, Hausler, Boss, I think. I think it might be Hausler. Oh, you think Hausler's yeah. got that one? Let's That's have a look. Be. Official result fairly shortly. Here we go. Here's the... The shot, there's Dennis in the middle. Ooh, that's close. I think you're right. Yeah. Hausler, and then Galimzinov, and then Boss. Very close sprint finish. <laughs> and behind, I would suggest the man from uh, Quickstep is Kiki. But in the end, it turned out to be a pretty old scrappy finish, uh, Graham. Yeah, but it's, um, sometimes you can get these run-ins a little bit, the roads are a little bit too wide, um, and you get this bunching up sometimes, and again, you know, you get people easing up in the middle of the peloton. I always, I always have a, the heart in my mouth when you see the riders doing the lead-out, and they suddenly almost stop pedalling once they've done the lead-out, and you, you've got riders who are still going pretty flat out, trying to avoid them and go around them, so you always get that sort of incident. Two quick step riders going down in the crash uh, before the finish. And uh, Hado, it looked like, who was uh, the man with the puncture. Contrast from yesterday, with a good crowd at the finish and that run in the last few kilometres. Yeah. Uh, plenty of people out there, so that's nice to see. And uh, yes, I think I think we'll see that more and more as we get out into more into the provinces and the uh, the smaller towns rather than uh, in something like the Olympic Park we had uh, yesterday. Hausler then ahead of Galimzinov and Boss. It was Kiki in fourth. Christoph gets fifth. Viviani, Apollonio. And Nizolo is getting up there for Lepetrek, which is good. Manueli Mori of Lamprey. I'm surprised that they didn't get Gavazzi up there. And uh, Angel Madrato finishing in 10th uh, spot, but a pretty scrappy finish.